Hello, this is Paxton. I got another video today. Um, before I get started, I want to talk about this execute vm heal.sqf. I'm not sure I was 100% clear about this on the last video. I'm using this, in this case, in an add action. So this is going to be called every time that the player uses, hits do heal. And what execute vm does is it spawns the script, but it also compiles it, which is not the best way of doing it. And you see that could actually hurt performance if you're doing that multiple times. So the best way is to make a function called heal the same way we did with player spawn. Um, you would that would look just like you just do call and if you created the function you would just call it heal or just you just call it just like that and that would be much much better because it wouldn't have to compile it every time it's already been already been done alright so now that that is clear I want to get into the variables from client to server actually from server to client but um, everything we've done so far has been on the client because all this code is being compiled from the enet player local.sqf so all all this is only available to each client so let's move over to the server in order to do that we're creating an sqf file called init server and I didn't come up with this name. This is something that is already available. It's um, it's just like the init player local SQF that we're using. Uh, the init server dot SQF is called by the engine on mission start, and it creates all the scripts and codes on the server side. So anything we do over here is not going to be running on all the clients. It's only going to run on the server. Um, so if we have a variable named countdown and we set it equal to 10 see that's a local variable and this one here is a global variable which I went over in the first video but just to make sure we're all on the same page um, this one here is available through the scope of this script. This here, this one here is global and is av is available throughout the mission. To be a little more precise, throughout the mission on this machine, which in this case is the server. So that countdown would not be available in this script. So if we wanted to hint countdown from here, we would get a undefined variable script error. So what if you have a countdown that you want all clients to see and may have joined in progress too, so you can't restart the countdown every time someone joins. Um, that's why we have a command called public variable what this does is it, it will broadcast this ver this variable to all the machines to all the clients um, and we, what you do is take the name of the variable and put it in quotation marks just like that so now when the server calls this public variable countdown, the countdown will be available to the client, just like this. And another good thing about public variable is that if this is called, it's like this is going to be called right on mission start. Countdown is going to be created and set to 10 right on mission start. If you have someone you connect a couple minutes later, the engine will automatically update this variable from the last time it was called to the client. Now if we come down here and we take countdown sorry and 
let's set it equal to itself minus 1, which make it 9. All the clients are still going to see 10 because we have not rebroadcast it. So anytime you make a change, you have to rebroadcast it to all the clients. So now if you are doing this a lot, it can hurt bandwidth and hurt performance. So you can't just keep doing this on a thousand different variables. It's, it would kill performance. So that's public variable, and that's how to get a simple way to get it transferred from the server to all clients. Um, I think I'm going to kill two birds with one stone with this video. I'm going to go over a control structure. I'm going to do the simplest one in this video. I might get into other for loops and for each loops in another video, but today we're going to do while. Um, What this does is, if you, all this code I have I've done before, the engine just runs straight down through it and finishes when it's at the end. Um, if you want something to continuously happen, you'll put it into a loop. And we're going to do a while loop. And while this countdown for this curly brace here is going to be your conditional conditional statement. So you want to tell it, hey, I want you to run all this code while this variable here is greater than negative 1. Then put do, and then this is the code it's going to call. And this is, would happen extremely fast. Uh, we want to slow it down. I want to call a public variable first. Um, let's slow this down by one second. So it will loop through this every second. So every second it's going to drop down one number from 9, 8, 7, so forth. And then after countdown is greater than negative 11, so when countdown gets to negative 1, it will exit this and then be done. Now over here it's going to hint 10 and then be done. So we won't actually see a countdown. So we'll just do another while loop. And let's do while countdown is greater than negative 1. I'm going to do that. And we don't need to sleep because all we're doing is broadcast or just showing a hint. Sorry, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it gets the point across. Let's see if I have any errors here. I don't see any, so let's go ahead and get the server launched. Alright, and um, coming up, next couple of videos, I was thinking about doing a GUI like I've been asked to do, um, and also I was considering maybe doing a game mode from scratch and just recording it and teaching you just the different things that I guess the different challenges I'm going to face with some of it too um, I probably it'd probably be a mixture between a wasteland or a life type mission because that's two different communities they kind of have two different needs a lot of them overlap but some of them are very similar so I'm considering doing that if if I see interest in me, you know, wanting to see that, I'll, I'll probably do it. But if not, I might just keep just doing these videos and just picking out just different subjects of scripting and try to address address all of them, and maybe even get to modding at one point. But we'll see. And hopefully, I didn't mumble too much this video. have our hint. There it is, counting down from 10. Really exciting. And then once it gets to zero, 
it's going to finish out the hint and it will disappear because it would have left the while loop. I'm just not sure how long the hints last. I think they last like three seconds or something like that. They usually fade out. <laughs> Thought it faded out by now. What is that? You know what? It may never finish that loop. Oh, it did. Okay. If I put this, if it's greater than, um, while it's greater than negative two, it would have never finished because it would have, the server would have stopped decreasing it if I had that at zero or something like that. But anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, it's pretty short, so hopefully uh, you learned something and it's all clear to you. And somehow I got insert turned on on accident. There we go. But that's it for now. Uh, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, let me know what you think. Like, if you have anything you want to see, if you like my ideas, uh, my idea of making a game mode and walking you through the process, definitely let me know that. And y'all have a good night, and I'll see y'all later.